Hello, everyone. Welcome to Children's Story Time. Hello and welcome. We're going to get started here in just a sec. Okay, here we go. Welcome back, Dr. Tyner. Okay, hold on one sec. There we go. All right. Okay, so as I said, welcome to Children's Story Time. Uh, today we are featuring um, Justice Makes a Difference by Dr. Artika Tyner. Here's a show of the uh, book cover here. And I'd also like to thank um, our sponsors, PNC, for helping us out with this program and all of our programs all month of Black History Month. So we are going to go ahead and jump into starting the story. But first, I would just like to introduce our author. Um, Dr. Tyner. If you want to share your video. We can see your face there. There you are. Welcome, Dr. Tyner. How are you doing today? Very well. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for joining us. I'm really excited about this book. It really fits in well um, with the themes that we have going on this month. Um, sorry if I'm having a little technical difficulty here, but without further ado, we will hop in. Thank so. you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here today to read and share with you my book, Justice Makes a Difference, the story of Miss Freedom Fighter Esquire. This book is really an opportunity to inspire all of us, young, old, and in between, that we are never too young to make a difference. This book, of course, is dedicated to the loving memory of my foremothers, my grandmothers who had a great impact in inspiring me to think about how I could serve and lead. And when I think about that, it's an invitation for each and every one of us to make a difference in our communities. So let's get started. Justice's favorite place to visit was her grandma's house. Grandma always greeted her with the biggest, warmest hug. Grandma always made justice feel important. The best part of grandma's house was her den full of books. So I have to ask, how many of you love to read? Well, justice loved to read, so let's learn more. Justice and grandma would spend hours together in the den, talking and reading. Your name is your destiny. Grandma had been telling Justice since the day she was born. Grandma reminded her often that being named Justice came with great responsibility. To whom much is given, much is accounted for, Grandma always said. Justice might not have understood all the words that Grandma said, but she understood that she was meant to serve and lead in her community. And I hope you notice in the picture, Justice also has a special friend named Freedom. You can see that Freedom is there, the beautiful furry cat. And so she has that special friend that joins with her on those reading adventures. One day when Justice was visiting, Grandma asked, what is in your hands to make a difference in the world? What can I do, Justice wondered. I'm only eight years old. How can I make a difference? Grandma served in the community. She fed the hungry, sheltered the homeless, clothed those in need and visited the sick. Grandma described this as living out her faith. Justice wanted to be like her grandma. She wanted to know how she could live out her faith. And you can see from the picture that you just saw that one of the ways that Justice decides to do that is by serving food in the community kitchen. 
Grandma found Justice in the den, heavy with thought. Tell me what's bothering you, Justice, Grandma said. I want to live out my faith like you, Grandma, but I'm only eight years old, Justice said. What can, what can I really do? What can I do is what she's thinking. Aren't I too young? Grandma's smile was gentle and reassuring. Your age does not show what you are capable of. So don't let someone tell you that you're too young to make a difference. Justice, do you remember the poem you wrote for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration at your school? Grandma asked. That poem made a difference. Justice remembered the applause of her teachers and classmates. She knew her grandma's words were true. Grandma gave Justice a book. Here's a book about someone else who made a difference through her writing. Justice spent the rest of the afternoon reading about Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells was a journalist who used her writing to advance racial equality. She skillfully wielded her pen to wage war for justice through her work as the editor of the Memphis Free Speech and Headlight. She continued to advance social change while serving as a journalist with Chicago's Daily Interocean and the Chicago Conservatory one of the oldest African-American newspapers in the United States. Justice was amazed by how Ida B. Wells used her pen to write for Justice. Justice picked up a pen and what did she say? She said, I can write for Justice. So notice the picture there of Ida B. Wells on the cover of the book. So here we are back with Justice and Grandma. All that week, Justice woke, worked on a poem about love and peace. When Justice visited the next weekend, she showed her grandma the finished poem. Words are powerful, grandma told Justice. They can be used in powerful ways to do good or to do harm. That's why it's important to always be careful with your words. You did good, Justice. Justice smiled. Grandma always made her feel proud. Justice? I have another book to share with you, Grandma said, and handed Justice a book with a picture of a man on the cover who stood larger than life. Words can be powerful and music can be powerful too, Grandma told her. So let's look at the cover of the book, that man that stood larger than life. Justice read all about Paul Robeson. Can you say Paul Robeson? Paul Robeson, who sang freedom songs in more than 20 different languages. He was a lawyer, a singer, an actor, and a professional athlete. Justice marveled at how talented Paul Robeson was. He was able to touch people's hearts through the power of a song. These songs empowered others to join in the fight for freedom and justice. Justice had grown up hearing her grandma sing powerful songs like We Shall Overcome and Sam Cooke's A Change Is Going to Come. These were freedom songs. When grandma sang, Justice could feel it all the way down in her toes. Grandma Justice said, I want to sing for justice. Will you teach me some songs? And grandma began to sing, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to Let It Shine. Justice felt a light inside her spark. Let it shine, let it shine, she sang. Sometimes when Justin visited, she helped grandma in the garden. Justice loved the way the warm earth felt under her feet. She was amazed by how the tiniest seed could become a big vine full of juicy red tomatoes or a tall forest of okra plants. Grandma would sing while they worked and Justice would hum along. Their music served as the rhythm for their digging and planting. Planting a garden was hard work and it gave Justice a lot of time to daydream. She fantasized about what it would be like to travel around the globe. What's the most exotic place you've ever traveled to, Grandma? Justice asked dreamily. Grandma chuckled. I haven't been much outside St. Paul, honey. Grandma said, but I traveled all over the world through books. This made Justice happy because she loved to travel through books too. So where would you like to travel to? 
So let's learn about one place on the continent of Africa that Justice would like to visit. Let's hear. After they were finished in the garden, Grandma gave Justice a book about a woman in a faraway land. Happy traveling, Grandma said. Justice read all about the country Kenya and the work of Dr. Wangari Mata. Can you say Wangari Mata? Dr. Matai was a global leader. She organized the Green Belt Movement with the hopes of restoring trees in her home country, Kenya. She sought to restore the beauty of nature and uplift the close-knit community. She began by organizing mothers, daughters, and grandmothers to take action by planting one seedling at a time. More than 51 million trees were planted. Justice had an idea. Grandma, can we bring the community together like Dr. Matai and start a community garden? Grandma smiled, her proudest smile. I think that's a wonderful idea. Should we invite others to help? Yes, Justice said. We can grow fruits and vegetables. Maybe we can ask our neighbors to help us. So now you see Justice in the garden with her neighbors planting not only fruits, but also vegetables. During one visit to her grandma's house, Justice was quieter than usual. She sat on her favorite green chair in grandma's kitchen drinking lemonade. Grandma looked concerned. What's troubling you, princess? My friends at school said women can't be president, Justice said, but I always thought I might grow up to be president someday. Justice, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't be who you want to be. She wanted to believe her grandma, but she still wasn't sure. When Justice got home from grandma's that afternoon, she found a book in her backpack about Shirley Chisholm. So can you say it? Shirley Chisholm. She knew it was from her grandma because her grandma always left books in hidden places as special gifts. Justice read about Shirley Chisholm, who became the first African-American woman to run for president of the United States in 1972. She called herself the candidate of the people because she was determined to fight for the rights of all people. Justice became very excited. I can be president one day, she said to herself. Then she stood tall and said with confidence, I can fight for justice. Justice couldn't wait to tell her friends at school about who again? Shirley Chisholm. She told her grandma all about it. Grandma? Now all my friends want to be present. I'm counting on it, Grandma said, smiling. What else are you learning about in school, she asked. This week, we learned about the legal case of Brown versus Board of Education, Justice told her Grandma. Grandma got a faraway look in her eyes. I remember attending school in a one-room shack in Alabama, she told Justice. Dozens of students with all grades gathered in the schoolhouse to learn together. We didn't have much, most days, not even paper or pencils, but we had a love of learning. Justice couldn't imagine going to school in a one-room schoolhouse with kids of all different ages. Justice told grandma she learned about Brown versus Board of Education. It was a case about ending segregation in schools. Grandma, we learned that black children were not allowed to attend school with white children. Yes, Justice, I remember, Grandma said. The schools were separate and unequal. Grandma, we also learned about the lawyer who worked in segregation in schools. Justice was proud to know such important information. Indeed, Grandma smiled. Charles Hamilton Houston. Can you say it? Charles Hamilton Houston. He said lawyers should serve as a mouthpiece for the weak and a sentinel guarding against wrong. That's a funny word, Justice said. What does it mean to be a mouthpiece, she asked. Grandma explained, a mouthpiece means that you use your voice to share about the challenges people face in society, like ending hunger or ending homelessness. What does sentinel mean? How about you find out for yourself in your what? Dictionary, Grandma said with a wink. Justice ran to find her dictionary. She paged through until she found sentinel. A sentinel is a soldier or a guard whose job is to stand and keep watch. Wow, Justice thought, I can be 
a soldier for justice. Finally, justice was sure. She knew that she could make a difference in the world by becoming a lawyer. Her love for superheroes inspired her vision for the future. She had a dream of becoming this freedom fighter esquire, a superhero with a law degree and an afro. Now Justice could see herself more clearly. She was determined to use her education in the struggle for justice. She finally understood the meaning of her grandma's words. To whom much is given, much is accounted for. Justice would live up to her name. Justice, are you ready for bed? Asked Grandma. Justice could not believe how fast the time went by. She had remained in the den all day with her books. And she lay down for bed and finished her bedtime prayer with Grandma. Justice said, Grandma, I will make a difference by becoming a lawyer and helping those in need. Grandma gave her a reassuring smile and kissed Justice goodnight. Justice found a book under her pillow, another special gift from Grandma. Justice began reading about Ella Baker. Ella Baker helped the young people of the civil rights movement get organized and take a stand for equality and freedom. Justice fell asleep, quietly humming Ella's song. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. To, to me, young people come first. They have the courage where we fail. And if I could shed some light as they carry us through the gale, struggling myself doesn't mean a whole lot. I've come to realize that teaching others to stand up and fight is the only way my struggle survives. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Thank you. And I encourage you, you can also listen along to the song, Ella's song, We Who Believe in Freedom Cannot Rest. There's a wonderful rendition from Sweet Honey in the Rock. Well, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tanner. So um, usually at this point in our um, little story time programs, I might speak with the author myself and ask a few questions about who they are and why they write what they write. But today I have a different idea. So today uh, we will be hosting a young woman by the name of Zamaya Jones, who is a student at King Middle School here in Atlanta. And she is really excited to speak with Dr. Tyner about what she thinks about the book and her illustrious career. So Zamaya, I give you the floor. Say hello. Hey. Um, Hi. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to hear your questions. Yeah. So uh, my first question is, um, what is your favorite childhood book? What is my favorite childhood book? Ooh, I love Nancy Drew. Growing up, I love the mystery of trying to solve a problem. And if you look at my work today, that really could be my inspiration of uh, becoming a researcher and also a lawyer, that there's always some problem to solve, but can we put our thinking cap on and figure it out? Okay. Um, thank you for the response. Um, my next question is, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Ah, oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Yeah, when did that's I first great. realize? I think I'm gonna tap into some of the words of Toni Morrison. That, that sense of when we don't see the books that we want to read, that we have an obligation to write them. So I had never seen when I was growing up this book, this type of book that I produced, a book that puts a young black girl as the main character and better yet, as a superhero. So in that way, I decided to become a writer when I started going into schools and volunteering and seeing time and time again, that even since I was a little girl, it hadn't changed that you're more likely to see a black bear or a black dog on the cover of a book than a black girl or a black boy. So I decided to write the books that I wanted to see your generation read and the future generations read as well. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Um, what inspired you to start writing? I think that piece I've always loved reading and writing. So I started as a little girl. 
about your age. I'd write short poems, short stories, short essays. Now, they probably, you wouldn't publish those and make those in the books, but still, <laughs> I started writing. So this is an invitation for everyone Start writing. Even if you take just one minute, write down your favorite sentence. What's coming to mind? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? What do you smell? What's your experience? Tap into all your senses and start writing down because when you're writing, you're writing down the chapters of history while also creating the future. That's very truthful. Um, tell us about your first published book and what was the journey like? My first public, published book was the book that I read today, Justice mm -hmm. Makes a Difference. And oh, the journey, really? I, yes, I and so that. the journey has been wonderful. I thought I had a goal of just writing the book. And if I sold one, I'd be happy. But my main goal was to donate a thousand copies of our Justin's book. And 1,000 seemed like a huge number. Since then, we'll be reaching a milestone soon of donating over 10,000 diverse books to children. Wow. So here it is. My goal was to simply join in and create the book that I wanted to see when I was a child. And the writing journey then was a challenge. So I'm going to introduce a word called courage. And because courage is the history of our people. During Black History Month, I'd be remiss not to say courage is our word of the day. Courage means yeah. despite of. So when I sent the book out, so typically a book is released and the package and getting all the illustrations, you get a publisher that helps you. And I sent the book out to many publishers and it was not well received. In many ways, they said they weren't certain if there was a market for the book. They weren't certain who wanted a book with diverse characters. So instead of hearing no, which we all will hear no during our lifetime, notice what I decided to do. I gave myself my own yes. I created my own publishing company. And to date, we published, oh, nearly a dozen books of our own because we wanted to create new books to inspire young people like yourself to have what we did not have, books that were those positive mirrors to see a great reflection of ourselves in the pages of books. And this is the dream and the hope of, let me give you one more piece of homework. Let's make sure we know who founded Black History Month, that we honor every day in our work, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who had the courage to start off in the 1920s with Negro History Week to say we need far more to document our history and help build a future. You're the legacy of Dr. Carter G. Woodson. He had you in mind when he helped to create and lay the foundation of Black History Month. Black excellence at his best. He was thinking of you. Zamaya, do you mind if I ask one question before you ask your next one? Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, I have to ask Dr. Tyner, is justice influence a little bit on a young Dr. Tyner? <laughs> Of course, I hope you can see a little bit of resemblance. This was me in my first grade citizen of the week photo. And grandma is actually my grandma Nellie, my maternal grandmother, because oh, I wanted to make sure that the story was rooted and grounded in a history that I knew, a history yeah. of my grandmother introducing books and those black heroes and sheroes that still inspire me today. That's great. Okay, so my, I love your next question, so please ask. <laughs> If your book was made into a movie, who are the celebrities you would start that would star in it? Sorry. Oh, ooh, no, I've never been asked this one. And I know Disney is waiting to call me. So hopefully you've initiated that process for a movie for the action figures. Well, I think for grandma. Ooh, let's start with her. Who is the grandma that inspires you? Now, I would love to say Ruby D. Ooh, Ruby, oh, yeah. so we give honor that that that's the perfect grandma who I would envision that type of character. Yeah, Young Justice. I don't yeah. think I would cast it as a Hollywood superstar. We would go into communities and go into schools, and we ask to know who was the real justice in their school, who's making a difference in real time. So in that way, I'd want an everyday child playing as Justice. And then for the cast, oh my goodness, I would want a Paul Robeson. I would one of Charles Hamilton Houston, because these heroes and sheroes laid the foundation for us today. So mm. I, oh, you got me so sparked up. Now I got to think it through. <laughs> and I can even see the cartoon. So I think you, you put a positive message and a vision for the future. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Turner, I heard uh, you might have a question or two you wanted to ask Zamaya about. Oh, I do. So you <laughs> had a chance to read the book and learn more about some of the heroes and sheroes that inspired justice. Mm -hmm. Who from the book inspired you and why? 
justice because she was like, um, when the when her friends told her that she couldn't um be president, she still like, she, I don't know, like. I don't know. She still wanted to do it, right? She still yeah. wanted to be herself. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah. That's connected to, we'll remember her name, Shirley Chisholm. In 1972, they said it couldn't be done, but she reminded everyone that she was unbought and unbossed, meaning she had the courage, the unwavering tenacity to keep pressing forward. So as we think about uh, the history of women in leadership in America, we know that Shirley Chisholm, Helped to write one of the early chapters to say that message of, yes, you can, and yes, we will, no matter what. So that's actually yeah, so it's being inspired by Justin. Yeah. She's amazing. I mean, like we wouldn't have the vice president that we have today without, without Shirley Chisholm and what she meant to the country. Did you have another one? I do. Here it is. And I even have it on my T-shirt. You know that Justice wanted to be Miss Freedom Fighter Esquire. You knew that she wanted to be the superhero with a law degree and an Afro. Mm -hmm. You clearly know I love superheroes, right? <laughs> so what would be, if you had a chance, what would be the superpower you would want and why? Uh, teleportation. Because okay, how? So I wouldn't be like, if I wanted to go somewhere real fast, I could just teleport there and then I don't have to walk or drive or something. I love it. So time and space does not limit you. You are the future superhero. Yay, yay, yay. Somebody can go and, anywhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go from the past and the present and continue to make a difference in real time. I love so I want to hear a little bit more. You said justice was inspiring for you and you would want to learn more about and be a part of the story of someone like justice and this is what you're doing today and making a difference. But I want to ask you, because, you know, for me, there are issues that I'm passionate about. So I work on education and criminal justice. And mm -hmm. I can tell you why I decided to write a children's book. Because many of my clients learn how to read in prison. And I was determined to make sure that all people knew how to read to be able to understand not only their rights, but to also unveil their leadership to make an impact in real time. So here it is. What issues are you passionate about and what would you like to see changed in your community? Um, I mean, it's a lot to think about, right? Are yeah. there things around the school that, or you know, things you see at home that, that you think you'd like to see different? at home like it's a lot of girls like playing basketball and stuff right mm -hmm. and then like if the boys be playing basketball and then when the girls ask they be like no because you're a girl yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's all right so we hear it we want to hear all yeah. things are possible for everyone and the girls yeah. want to play basketball to throw them the ball i love that thank you yeah. thank you thank you thank you Fantastic. i appreciate you yeah, thank you to you both. This has been such a great experience uh, to hear the book and to, you know, to see from Zamaya's perspective, like what she's interested to know about. I mean, Dr. Tony, you've had an amazing career already so far, and, and you're inspiring young women just like this. No, I'm grateful. I'm being inspired. So thank you. Well, thank you, you both so much. So um, I'm going to take us to the end here a little bit. And if anybody has any last minute questions, um, feel free to throw them in the chat while we kind of wrap things up here. But otherwise, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, I'd like to thank Dr. Tyner for her time today, um, reading our book to us and young Zamaya Jones. Thank you so much for bravely getting up and, and interviewing Dr. Tyner on air today. Um, We'd also like to thank um, Deborah Tavares and Solstice Inc. Um, Deborah helped me get connected with um, Bevan Carpenter and um, uh, Miss Titcher, um, Zamaya's teacher, um, to get her on air with us. So we really appreciate that. Um, and then also, um, just so everybody knows, as we continue through Black History Month, we'll be reading other books. Um, so next week, um, we are featuring The Electric Slide and Kai by Kelly Baptist. And it'll also be a dance class instead of an interview after that uh, the, uh, book reading, which should be pretty fun. 
Um, and of course, um, we'd like to thank our sponsorship and PNC for helping us out today. Again, Dr. Tyner, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so as much. well, Zamaya. You did an excellent job. <laughs> she did. Thank you. Have a good <laughs> afternoon, everybody. Take care.